from the flow processing strategies in mule 3 to thread switching using dedicated thread pools in mule 4 the runtime has been a complete overhaul to its previous version so in this video we are going to understand about the different thread pools in the mule 4 runtime so to get started let's understand a few basics let's understand the observer pattern the observer pattern has two components the observable and the observer so the observable is something that can be observed by an observable you can also think as a publisher and subscriber mechanism so the observable could be a publisher and the observer is a subscriber so in this particular example I have a weather forecast database which updates the data like every minute or an hour. So the job of the observable over here is to change its state based on the weather forecast DB. So the observable will continuously poll the weather forecast DB for data and change its state. So the observer calls the observable even the observer polls the observable for any changes and the observable also polls the weather forecast db and in similar manner there could be multiple observers which could be observing the observable that is polling the observables so whenever any data comes the observers poll the observable and in if case in case if there is any data the observable will send back the response but there is a problem over here that there are three observers and they are unnecessarily polling the observable if there is data then it's good but if there is no data it is causing unnecessary polling towards the observable and observable is also polling the weather forecast db so instead what we can do is we can have the observable call the observer that is observable will push the message to observer instead of the observers polling the observable and again observable polling the forecast db so only one component does the polling and the other just wait for the observer available to call them or to push any messages to them so this can be done with a single thread for example observable polls using the thread t1 and the thread t1 again sends the message to the, all the observers but in this mechanism there is a problem like a single thread is doing all the work it is not having a single responsibility it has having multiple responsibility and other observers have to wait for thread one to send the message to every single like if the thread t1 is sending message to the first observer the second one has to wait and the third one so since one thread is doing all the job other observers have to wait so to eliminate this problem what we can do is we can add a component called as scheduler which is backed by its own thread pool so whenever the observable is polling the weather forecast db and if it gets any data from it it can push the message to the scheduler and the scheduler using its thread pool can trigger the response or the message to the observable observers in parallel using the thread pools from the threads in the thread pool it will push the message or notification to the observer so this pattern is similar to a publish subscribe pattern you can also call it as a publisher and subscriber relation where the publisher on whenever the new message comes it pushes the message to scheduler and scheduler with the help of its multiple thread because it is backed by a thread pool it pushes the messages to the subscriber let's move ahead and understand the flow back pressure now let's suppose we have an observable and an observer which is observing the observable. Suppose the observable gets 10 messages and it pushes the 10 events to the observer. 
and the observer was able to successfully process those 10 events but all of a sudden it gets 100 events and pushes the same to the observer the observer due to its limited capacity is only able to handle 10 messages or events at a time and then due to this the 90 events are just waiting it's not able to handle so in this case what will happen is there could be a crash in the system since there is a surge of request coming right so we need a fault tolerance mechanism inside the application and to handle this so what happens is the observer can say okay all the threads are occupied i do not have any thread vacant as of now to handle the remaining request right so it can push a pressure on the observable that do not send any new request i am not able to consume the rate of sending the message is greater than the rate of consumption so it pushes a back pressure on the observable so in case if the observable is an http listener of mule effectively on practical grounds you will be able to see a 503 error like the server is busy and in case of jms it will not send the acknowledgement message back so the benefit of having this flow back pressure mechanism is that it prevents the application from crashing or getting an out of memory error so that is the benefit that you get due to the flow back pressure so many a times you might observe in your mule application when you run on your anypoint studio and that is a huge application and you trigger like 10 to 15 requests back to back at a time within a very few short period of time and your machine is low on memory and other things or the thread pools are less so at that time you might see the mule colon flow back pressure error and that is because of this so by default the flow back pressure is automatically configured by the runtime on its own depending on if any threads are present or not or else you can manually configure by setting the max concurrency element in the flow so that decides the number of message or the throughput of your flow per second so you can either do it manually or it is pre-configured by default in mule so let's move to the thread pools now mule 4 has three main thread pools there are a total five but as of now let's just focus on the three thread pools and each thread pool is backed by its own scheduler and the thread pool usage is linked to the message processor for example the first one is the cpu light thread pool so cpu light thread pool is only used for non-blocking task when i say non-blocking task means they do not block the thread need not wait it can just complete the task in one breeze it never waits so any task that consumes less than 10 second of the cpu clock time it falls under the cpu light so ultimately it's linked to a processor so any message processor which has a functionality which never blocks the thread falls under this cpu light for example the set payload the set variable the logger all this component fall under the cpu light thread pool so any task that has to be done for this processors that can be done by the cpu light thread pool now next one is the cpu intensive thread pool so the cpu intensive thread pool is for partially blocking tasks which block less than 20 percent of the cpu clock time it's not completely blocking but it slightly blocks so one of the component is the data view transform now remember only the transform message component falls under the cpu intensive if you use the data view uh, language the data view script in your set variable or set payload that won't come under cpu intensive any data view written in the transform message component falls under the cpu intensive and also if you use any script component that would come under the cpu intensive thread pool so that will be that task will be done by this scheduler pool that is the cpu intensive now next is the blocking io 
blocking io is mostly when we are doing some io operation like we are calling the database we are calling the file system in that case it is a blocking io so any database select delete read or file read file write all those operation fall under the blocking and these are mostly blocking for the 90% of the time they will block the thread so that is why any task coming any message processor like select insert delete related to database or related to file or any other such processor will use a blocking blocking thread pool now as of mule version 4.3 all of this three thread pools have been merged to a single uber thread pool so if you are using a version less than 4.3 you will find this three thread pools but if you use a version of runtime which is on 4.3 you will only find an uber thread pool apart from this three thread pools there are also two other thread pools now let's understand those so the other thread pool other two thread pools belong to the http thread pools so they are dedicated to the http module so the mule for http module uses grizzly under the covers grizzly needs selector thread pools configured and java neo that is non blocking io has the concept of selector thread pools and this thread pools that is check the state of neo channels and create dispatch events when they arrive so the http listener selector thread pool and there is an http requester selector thread pool so selector thread pools are divided into two parts okay one is for the listener and the other one is for the requester so the http listener selector pulls for the request events only and the http requester selector pulls for the response event only now there are few things about the http listener and the http requester the http listener thread pool is only one per runtime and it is shared across multiple apps in a single runtime which means that if your application is on premise that is you uh, have hosted it on a standalone mule server you will be able to host multiple application in a single runtime right in case of standalone server if it is on cloud you won't be able to host a multiple application on single runtime but this applies to all the applications on premise so since on premise uses standalone server and standalone server can host multiple applications in a single runtime the selector thread pool for the http listener is only one so all the other application in that runtime will share this selector thread pool whereas for requester it is not the case in case of requester the thread pool is one per application so if there is a single runtime and that runtime has multiple applications deployed to it each application will get its own share of a dedicated selector thread pool exclusively for the http requester so that's the difference and considering the other three thread pools this thread pool are not created during the runtime startup but created when the application is deployed depending on if the application has the http module or not if it doesn't have then there's no point of creating it but if it has they need to depend on the http module to create this two different thread pools so remember there are three main thread pools apart from those three there are two other thread pool depending on the http module and since http module is using grizzly grizzly needs neo non blocking io and non blocking io depends on selector thread pool and that is why we have two different selector thread pools now let's understand the sizing of thread pool so cpu light 
the minimum size depends on the number of cores that the host machine has and it is created during the startup and the maximum size is 2 into the number of cores and it it's incremented by 1 again cpu intensive minimum size is number of cores and it is created at the startup and max is 2 into the number of cores blocking io it depends minimum size depends on number of cores and it is also created at startup the maximum size has a formula and this is the formula number of cores plus memory memory minus 245670 divided by 5120 and the increment is by 1 now there are two other one is grizzly shared when i say shared it is for the http listener when i say dedicated it is for the http requester so the shared also the same it depends on number of cores and when it is the first application with http listener is deployed only then it will get created and the number of cores plus one would be the formula for maximum size the increments of one and for dedicated when you deploy an application with an http requester and since it is dedicated each application when the runtime is shared each application will get its own dedicated share of the thread pool now suppose if i have a two core and one gb memory system so the max would be two into two that is four for light and intensive and for blocking it would be around like 149 because convert the 1 gb into bytes and then divide the subtract this value 245670 divided by 5120 and add the number of core it will approximately turn around to 149 or something so that is how this calculation takes place so if you want to see this calculation and you have a standalone runtime you can go to the scheduler.conf configuration file and you can see the detailed list all these formulas are present in those files so but ensure that you have a standalone version less than 4.3 since after 4 from starting from 4.3 this light intensive blocking are all merged into an uber thread pool so now let's see this thread pools in action to demonstrate that i have a mule flow which has an http listener as the source component and then we have the logger message processor select transform logger and request so even this follow the publish subscribe or you can say the observable and observer pattern if you see the http listener the http listener is it is an observable for the logger right and logger is an observer to the observable http listener you can also call like http listener is a publisher to the subscriber logger right two different paradigms you can choose whichever you want whichever you are comfortable in then again logger becomes the observable or the publisher to select which is an observer or the subscriber to the logger and the same chain continues to other processors now if you notice the observer in this case to the listener is an observable to the select so the same processor can behave is behaving as a observable that is publisher and an observer that is subscriber so every element every element or processor in this flow plays a role of observer and observable so now for the listener listener is an observable but it is an observer to the last processor in the flow that is the requester so even the listener plays a role of observer to the last message processor in this flow so it has a select it has a transform it has two loggers and a requester so all the thread pools are pre-configured we have 
CPU light, CPU intensive, blocking I/O, and other shared Grizzly and dedicated Grizzly. So why do we have shared Grizzly and dedicated Grizzly? Because we have a listener in the flow and a requester in the flow. If these two components or processors would have not been present, these two thread pools would have not been created. So remember, if you have a listener and a requester you are definitely going to have the shared grizzly and dedicated grizzly because they ultimately need neo and neo needs selector thread pools so now let's uh, start so since it is listener a thread from the shared grizzly comes and does the task because it will be continuously listening to some port and that selector will give the message and it will come to the flow now then one point to remember this small gap right so the handover from the source to the flow is usually done by a cpu light thread pool always but in this case we already have a logger so the work of this logger also will be done as the cpu light so in the next step a thread from the cpu light thread pool comes and it executes the task so had there been some other processor other than this logger like direct select so what would be the case the handoff that is this small part would have been done by the cpu light thread pool and from this point it would have been a blocking io thread pool so that's the difference so any handoff from the source to the flow happens always using the cpu light thread pool now since this task of logger has started there's no point of holding the listener thread pool so it can be sent back to the thread pool so it's sent to the shared grizzly and then we have the database select operation so the blocking io comes into picture and it takes the responsibility of executing the task of the select so everything is going to the scheduler and the scheduler is executing the task so every single thread pool is backed by its own scheduler and the scheduler is doing this job so again the logger has no use so it goes back to the thread pool and it can be used by other request right now again we have a data view transform so remember if there is a data view transform it has to switch so it will go back to CPU intensive. We no need no lo no longer lead, need the blocking IO, right? So a thread from CPU intensive comes. And what change did we observe? Like I said, the logger work has to be done by the CPU light, but the CPU intensive has done all the job, right? Now, how did that happen? So behind the scene mule does a few optimization because too much of thread switching is not good right so to avoid that mule optimizes the process and instead it knows that okay if transform message uses cpu intensive then the same thread can also do the logger because logger is non-blocking right so so it won't block the thread it it happens instantaneously and the thread can be written back to the pool so it will do the job but suppose if there was a logger before the transform that is if the logger was placed after the select and then the transform then definitely it would have been handed over to a cpu light because it has to be done by cpu light we cannot utilize the blocking blocking ios are uh, very less utilized by other lo low weight processor because uh, they consume the most of the time right so it is important that it is quickly sent back to the thread pool so in case if this logger was after the select it would have been switched to the cpu light and after that if there was a transform means if there, if there was a transform after the logger it would have moved to cpu intensive because light can never do, do the task of uh, intensive but intensive can do the task of CPU light. So that is a point that you should remember that light cannot do the task of intensive, but intensive can do the task of light. So that that's the reason the CPU intensive has done the task of logger to prevent unnecessary thread switching because even thread switching is an overhead. And if you 
do that unnecessarily it will just reduce the efficiency so again the cpu intensive also triggers a request from the requester now remember the triggering of requester can be done by this intensive light thread pools but the response listening to the response has to be done by the selector thread pool so when the response will come back it will be taken up by the dedicated grizzly because the requester needs a dedicated grizzly thread pool so when so now select thread pool will go back because it has no use now so it it goes back the thread is returned back to the pool and now the when the response come it is being picked up by the dedicated grizzly thread pool and that response is being handed over to the listener and the cpu light thread pool now this will go back cpu intensive has no work so that goes back and then again the cpu light thread pool a thread is taken from the thread pool and it does the job of sending back the response to the client so this is how a mule flow works with the switching of multiple threads and depending upon the operation the threads could be reused rather than switching so a heavy thread can also do a light process but a light pro thread cannot do the heavy process so that is the point you should remember and also remember that any handoff from the source to the flow is always being done using the cpu light thread pool now let's see this whole process in action using a mule project so i have the same project as shown in the slide previously now we'll try to run this project and see in the log what happens so the application has been started and if you can see we can see the thread pools right cpu light thread pool size is 8 to into the number of cores it's it becomes 8 cpu then io thread pool max size is 148 and cpu intensive the thread pool size is 8 so it's 2 into the number of cores and io thread pool was depending on the number of uh, depending on that formula we'll see that later but now let's try to trigger a request right so i'll hit this and i should get some logs okay i am getting the logs but since it is in info mode we cannot see the grizzly logs right we are just seeing cpu light and cpu intensive like the logger which says received request has been executed by cpu light and then the other one if you notice let's go back to the flow once this select log didn't print but instead this logger got printed now let's see what log i have written this says received a request this one says request completed successfully right let's go back to the console and check the logs request received and request completed successfully so what did we observe this log didn't get printed because it is in info mode so it didn't and even for this it didn't print but what happened the flow from the source it came to logger and the handoff was done by the cpu light but since it was a logger everything was executed by cpu light then the blocking one took its place and the blocking thread did the job it moved to transform and since transform was cpu intensive and it can easily do the task of logging it was not switched to a cpu light thread pool as opposed to the previous logger previous logger was done by cpu light but this wasn't done by cpu light this was done by the cpu intensive and that is evident over here right it's done by cpu intensive and then there are other internal logs that are coming in between which are also done by cpu intensive but the requester task it would have been initiated by cpu intensive but the response that would have come that would have been done by the grizzly now to see the actual logs we will just go to the log4j.xml and add a debug level log so it's simple you can just add org.mule and make the level as debug and now let's just redeploy the application i'll run this run as mule application 
so i've made the logs in debug mode and as you can see the debug level logs are appearing right now and what happened i triggered the request and if you can see the listener is using selector runners right so the selector thread pools are coming into picture and then the handoff was done using the cpu light and also the logger got executed using the cpu light so i can see the request has been received and after that the query was executed using the blocking thread pool right so as you can see it's saying executing query and then select star from test test is a table that i'm using and again the blocking thread pool gets a response and after that i can see a cpu intensive cpu intensive is for the data view transform component and it's doing the job and again if you see the logger which says request completed successfully uses the cpu intensive task and then the request is sent back sent using the http requester and that handoff can be seen using a cpu light thread pool so, so we have seen the grizzly selector runner and the cpu light then the blocking then the intensive and then also the cpu light to send back the response to the client so this is how the actual thread switching happens in a flow now what we can do is we can just try to replace this now this like i said it previously right if i move this logger what happens this logger should be get got executed by the cpu light as opposed to cpu intensive let's just move this logger before this and see what happens i'll redeploy the application it should get redeployed quickly so i have triggered the request with this changes and let's see what appeared in the logs so i can see a cpu light we have a selector runner at the beginning for the listener then we have received the first log using the cpu light and it says received a request then we have a blocking blocking thread pool being used for running the select query and the select query gets completed successfully and after that we can see the received request completed successfully log right we switched the position and that has been done by the blocking thread pool since it was hardly a non blocking task the blocking thread pool did the job it didn't switch to cpu light or anything but it switched to it used the existing blocking and after that since it was transform the blocking thread since transform is partially blocking right so there's no point of holding the blocking it was returned back to the thread pool and the control was given to the cpu intensive so if there are non blocking task it can be done by any like blocking provided that the blocking is already in progress it will so the non blocking task will be completed by that thread pool but if it is partially blocking the blocking thread the blocking thread pool won't take that task instead it will be given to cpu intensive so that is what has happened when i rearranged the positions so now initially uh, we saw that uh, like eight thread pools were assigned to uh to the cpu light and cpu intensive and like 148 was assigned to uh, what do we say this blocking thread so that can be f you can estimate that using uh, task manager so if we go to performance so i can see my machine has two cores but i think it took this value logical processor because the formula was 2 into the number of cores right so it was 4 into 2 and that is the reason it had it might have become 8 the thread pools assigned were 8 so this is how you can understand how much of how much threads will get created during the run time when your application starts Now again if you want to see exactly what is the configuration I have downloaded the enterprise standalone 4.2.2 you can navigate to the conf folder and inside conf folder you can see scheduler pools.conf I'll just open it 
so it, it has all the details of those configuration so as you can see we have the graceful shutdown timeout which even appeared in the console that was 15,000 milliseconds then the cpu light org.mule.runtime scheduler cpu light thread pool which was 2 into the number of cores which in this case it was 8 then we have another one that is the blocking thread pool and it depends on the formula max of 2 and cores plus this is the formula and then the intensive thread pool that is 2 into cores so in this way you can find out what is the configuration by referring the scheduler pools.config and like like we saw in the first slide right there is a scheduler and scheduler uh, the task is being pushed the scheduler and then the scheduler delegates this task so every particular thread pool has its own scheduler and then the delegation of task is done by this scheduler so i hope uh, you would have found the video useful thanks for watching